Hey everybody. That was a long three or four days, but that's behind us. It's seven o'clock. Temperature's 81 degrees. Humidity's 49%. I came to a conclusion today that pop rivets are a cancer and they have to go. So I'm going to, within reason, there's stuff that I can't access. I'm not going to rip the fuselage sides off to redo with squash rivets, but I'm certainly going to redo bulkhead 1.0 and everything I can get, I can access, I should say, with a bucking bar. This is the back end of the elevator, elevator support. This is what I've been building for I think three or four, definitely three days, maybe four days. But the picture's worth a thousand words. I've got the provisions here for, to screw some sort of a, a surface across there. These are all 10 32nd. It's all 10 32nd screws. I don't know why, but they like their 10 32nd screws. As you can see, the design kind of focuses on a central area. It triangulates to right here, where then there's two, on my version, there's two 5 16th inch bolts. I don't, I think they're like 5 16th, uh, those are 5 16th, 24 threads per inch, whereas on the real V36 they're like 5 16th, 18 thread. But I'm not paying you know, like $9 for a bolt. So did what I can with the hardware stores and they come out here to your, your castle nuts. Let's go have a look on the inside. I am glad I got this stuff done before the summer gets here because I would not enjoy being up under that uh, bulkhead in about 120 degree heat. All right. So what this thing does is it's simply the uh, the elevator support structure or the elevator uh, segment support structure. The segments hang on to big pins that go up into these one half inch holes, and then you got a 10 30 second bolt that goes across which holds them up there so if you release this bolt which will be a bolt um the pin falls out and the seg the segment falls out with it there's one here there's one there uh other than that really what's on here is just these these rollers back here which i guess they kind of keep them locked in a in a plane of function ah uh, my Back of the front end didn't fit with my initial design because these were too close. Mind you, when I built the bulkhead, again, I was looking at the front of it from a picture taken, you know, four feet away at best with no ruler up on it. So I really didn't know exactly how far apart these had to be, but we know now. So I simply de riveted them and flipped them over to get the long sides facing out, the short sides. Well, the long side's facing that way and the short side's facing out. So those are fixed now. And I'm going to completely redo all these with uh, squash rivets. Um, I guess I can show you around. It's almost exact fit in there. This is uh, <clears throat> from this surface here to this surface here is five and a quarter inches. And then it hangs down two and a half inches from here to there. It's 20, including the sides, it's 25 and a half inches long. Don't know what you could see up under here, but. That right there, I couldn't see on the IPB. I knew it was, I knew it had the, a taper in it, but I didn't think mine was gonna be that accurate. I thought my bolts were gonna be just a little bit higher. 
So when I built the original bottom, I didn't include that taper. But once I got this installed in here, squared and leveled up, it, it fit just like the real airplane. So I had to add that that step down taper in order to get the, uh, the box you see back there to line up with the, um, the big bolts. Um, this will be tremendously easier to fix. I just have to duplicate this and this flat part and pop it on there with uh, squash rivets, of course, and then build the, these cross members or whatever you call them, stringers. Get those up there. And these things, believe it or not, are held in by just two 10 32nd bolts right here, one inch. And there's two more over there, one, two. Um, with these out of the way, we've got the elevator support segment supports done. We have the rudder segment supports done. So that just leaves the aileron, and I have to look to see where the aileron segments are because their, their housings are the actual yoke assemblies. There's a, they come off the yoke with a, uh, a chain, like a bike chain with a gear. They drop down to there to another gear. And there's a pulley, then it transfers, I guess, to a pulley, which then transfers either out or over to that one. So the yokes both move simultaneously at the same time. And then, of course, they're connected by a three-inch pipe on the bottom, and it's hollow. That's where those chains and the, uh, the cables are. And then I know something goes out here. There's some sort of a, a contraption that lives here and there. That may be the segments, but don't... Don't hold me to that, but I am now free to build the actual segments. I'm not going to be able to find the cable tension adjusters. I, I don't even know if I want to duplicate them. I, I don't know how much. I mean, I actually, I have the, the IPBs for them. I mean, I, I could build them. I just don't know how functional I'm going to make them. You know how I talk. I end up doing it anyways, but I'd like to be able to find the originals or something close to it so I could modify them, but. I guess they're under some serious spring tension. So the ones I have seen say do not open unless you have a jig. So that indicates they may be dangerous. But um, I do have a really good picture of one now, thanks to thanks to my guy at the SAC Museum. You know who you are. And I thank you so much for putting your head up in here and crawling up under here and getting on your back and taking pictures of this stuff for me yesterday. I can't thank you enough for that, my friend. But the problem with the segments is each one of the segments, this one, that one, that one, and that one, they've got rollers. They've got nine rollers, and the best I can find are like pulleys um, to stuff I'd have to take apart from like Harbor Freight, and they're like 3 or $5 a piece. So nine times four, I need 36 of them. So, you know, you're looking at 100, 150 bucks just to get the freaking pulleys up there. But... I'll find something. You got to do what you got to do. It's been a long day. This this thing has been a fight every inch of the way, but it's really cool how it fits in between those um, those frames right there. It, it pops up and it doesn't move. I mean, it don't. It practically sits up there by itself. But she's she's an amazing structure. I still have to add about an eighth of an inch of material here, a slight little step down to get to so this, the um, segments don't uh, rub on that, but we're getting there. Tomorrow should be that, so I can get these mounted, finish that up. And I do have uh, AN bolts coming for these 10, 30 seconds because I can't put a screw in there, so I, I definitely have to do a wrench. I try to make things as, as serviceable as possible. Enough about this. I'll see y'all next time.